What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that comes with the vegetation asset library that you can bring into Blender. So looking for trees and other assets can be kind of frustrating um, when you're working in 3D. So one of the more frustrating things that you can run into when you're working online is, lo is looking for trees and other assets that are gonna render out nicely um, inside of Blender. So so this particular add-on is an add-on that comes with an asset library of vegetation that you can use inside of your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find this add-on in the Blender Marketplace, and I will link to this in the notes down below. You can also get here by um, going to the cgessentials.com slash vegetation. But basically, this add-on is called Tree Vegetation, and it's a tree, shrub, and plant add-on for Blender. And basically what it is, it's a library of trees and shrubs that you can use in order to create renderings and um, other different vegetation-type scenes inside of Blender. So um, the results seem to be pretty good. Um, there's there's two versions in here. So there's the pro version and there's the light version. So the pro version has all of the assets that are in here. The light version has about 40%. I'm not sure if there's something down below that shows exactly which ones are included and which ones aren't, but you can see how it does have a number of different trees in here. And if we scroll down, and it's more than trees too, but if we scroll down, um, there's a list of the different kinds of trees that are in here. So tropical, um, there's shrubs, other things like that. And I'm just gonna open up a new Blender window. And so, um, when you first get this add-on, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've enabled it. So you can go to your preferences and enable that. And you're just gonna wanna make sure that this generic vegetation has been enabled. So um, once you enable that, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a menu on the right-hand side of your page over here called vegetation. So remember, you can open that window up by tapping the N key on your keyboard. And let's go ahead and just add a plane in here just to give us something to kind of cast shadows on. So now the way that you can use this add-on is you can click in here in order to see the library of trees and plants that are contained inside of it, right? And so if you click on this with all selected, you're gonna see everything. And I believe you can just move your mouse to the bottom and it's gonna scroll through these. So these are also organized by different types. So there's different pots and shrubs and trees. So if you wanna organize them that way, you can do that. But for now, let's add an object. So let's go into our trees and click on this. So these are all the trees that are available inside of the add-on. If you have the pro version, you can see how there's a number of different trees for different locations. But let's say that we wanted to add in like, um, let's go with this Rose Hill White Ash. So what you would do is you would click on this in order to add it. And then there's a button in here for add tree. And notice how there's two options in here. There's one for center and one for cursor. So if you pick center, it's basically gonna place it right in the center of your model where your axes intersect. If you select cursor, it's gonna place this where your cursor is located. But let's say we were to click on the button for add tree. What that's gonna do is that's gonna drop this tree into your scene right here. And it takes a little while to bring in. So I will note these models are kind of bigger and higher polygon, but they're designed to be rendered. So just note that this is going to bring those in, but it's gonna take a little while for everything to load. But you can see how if you look at this, this has a ton of detail inside of it. So if we look at this, you can see that our leaves are all detailed out in here individually, just like this. And so, let's say that we were to do a quick render. So I'm going to, I think I'm an EV right now. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this in and then let's, instead of having a point light, let's have a sun. Give it a little bit of an angle like this. And then let's up the brightness to something like 10 for right now, just so we can take a look at this tree. Well, you can see how this does a really good job of rendering out all of the different branches in here, and the tree looks really good. In my opinion, I think this gets you a really good result, so I'd be super happy to have this in any of my scenes. So when we look at it from a rendering standpoint, I think you do get really good results. Um, let's say we were to take a look at something smaller. So let's say we were to look at one of the shrubs and bring that in. So let's just bring this little shrub right here. And let's move our 3D cursor over here and add this tree. I didn't select cursor, so it's gonna put it right in the middle anyway. But let's move this over here. Again, you can see how there's a lot of detail in this shrub. So, I mean, I, I think, 
I think when it comes to libraries, I'm pretty impressed with the results that you can get by bringing these in here. And so one thing to note about this is these all have four different seasons contained inside of them. So for example, this is the summer tree, but let's say we were to go back into our trees and let's say we wanted an autumn tree. You can click on autumn and you're gonna get a collection of the same trees with yellow leaves. So you've got that autumn result instead. So let's say we wanted to bring in this sycamore maple. So let's put our cursor over here and click on add tree. You're gonna get the autumn tree in here instead of this version right here. And so these come in fully textured, which is also really nice because you don't have to mess around with a lot of textures. But notice how these leaves um, are really detailed as well. So you've got your yellow leaves in here. And so another cool thing about this is if you do want to look at all of those at once, so let's say you wanted to look at all of the trees, you can do a shift click to select the multiple different trees, and then you can see all of those in here at the same time. So you can look at your spring and your summer and your winter in here, no problem. So I'm gonna click back into material preview mode just for a second. Um, so if you do wanna see all of those, you can just do the shift click in order to do that. And so another cool function that's in here is the option for randomize. So one thing you might notice is when you bring in new versions of the trees, they're automatically brought in Let's just go with the maple version again, but they're automatically brought in slightly different. So this is automatically randomizing your trees when it's creating them. So notice, for example, that this one has slightly different rotation. The leaves are slightly different. So they're not exactly the same, right? If we were to look at them from top down, for example, you can see how this is just a little bit different than this tree right here. And so every time you bring a new tree in here, it's gonna be slightly different. So if we add another one, you're gonna see that this one's gonna be slightly different as well. So see how it's slightly different shape, um, slightly different rotation, um, slightly different size. There's not a huge difference in here, but let's say that you wanted these to be a little bit more different, right? You still felt like they were too uniform. Well, you could select these different trees in here, select the option for randomize. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna go through here and ran or, um, randomize the attributes of this tree so that it looks a little bit different. So notice how each one of these is being randomized a little different. You can also select one and just randomize that as well, which is another cool feature because if you just have one tree that you don't really like, you can just randomize that in here, no problem. So another cool feature in here that I like is the snap tree to ground. So let's say for example that we, instead of having a flat plane, let's say that our plane, let's just, I'm gonna scale this up a little bit more and tab in here and subdivide it like this maybe we'll subdivide it again like this and then let's just use the move tool with some proportional editing to add some up and down real quick and so let's say you wanted to drop these down on this surface, right? So you could go through for each one of them and move them down manually, but that's really a pain when you have a lot of different trees. What you can what you can do instead is you can come through here and you can select these different trees and click on the button for snap tree to ground. What that's going to do is that's going to move these down until the object um, the object origin point intersects with whatever's beneath it. So you can use this to place things on surfaces really quickly as well. All right, so now let's say that we were to add a shrub like this little tree right here. Um, there's also an option down below to animate the movement of those shrubs. And so there's a number of different uh, presets in here. So like light breeze, medium wind that are going to apply that. But you can see if you click the play button, what that's gonna do is that's going to animate the movement of those leaves and of the trunk like the wind was actually blowing with it. So um, if you uncheck the box for the trunk, then it'll just blow with the leaves like this, so you can see how as I drag this back and forth, that's gonna give me that kind of like leaf blowing in the wind um, function as well. And you can adjust 
the size of that movement or the strength of that movement using the uh, sliders over here. So you can see I can set that so that that moves more or less depending on what you're trying to do. So that's a really cool function. I will note the more leaves that are on your tree, the uh, more processing power this is going to take. So um, just be aware of that when you're working with this. And then one other thing, if you do a shift D, and this is something they talk about on their page as well, but if you do a shift D and duplicate this, um, you get kind of a weird result with the animation over here. So you see how it's like jumping around a lot more than this other tree. So what you need to do when you do a duplicate is just click on this button for retarget animation to reset this over here. So overall, I really like what's contained inside of this add-on. So it's a great library of different plants and trees that you can use in your renderings. It means you don't have to go searching for a lot of those different trees. So I will note that some of these are kind of high polygons. You may have to take some measures in order to make sure that you don't have so much in your model that becomes that it becomes unmanageable. But from a detail standpoint, I think the results that you get from these are really great. Um, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.